Okay, everybody, it's five past one. Andrew, if you'd like to continue uh, recording. Resume, I can do that. Okay, so my name's Tony Lelliot, uh, and um, I am going to take you through the um, next session, which is on Publish Open Access. And um, just to let you know, I work at uh, the organization called SADI. Um, and we run uh, a few initiatives, one of which is OER Africa. And it's OER Africa who is, uh, is partnering, collaborating with um, AFLIA to run these particular um, uh, really work sort of workshops um, and they're certainly professional development sessions so i just wanted to um give you an indication um why are we actually how did we come up with this idea of learning pathways to start with um we came up with them from our experience over many years we've worked um across africa for many years uh in in Saidi, and um most Work, most professional development for staff appears to be, in the past, appeared to be workshops, which took people out of their workplaces, they went along to the workshop, to a hotel, had some nice food, learnt a few things, and then went back and, to their workplaces and did exactly the same as they did before. They didn't really necessarily implement the stuff they'd learned in the workshop. So we were, what we're doing here in these learning pathways is experimenting with other ways of, uh, of providing professional development for people. And we ca actually came up with these about two years ago, and we've been developing over the last year uh, these three learning pathways. And uh, we, had, uh, we had set them up as standalone online um, tutorials, in a way. And we, uh, we never expected what happened in the world in sort of February, March, April. The fact that people couldn't travel and actually now, if they wanted professional development, they needed to be online. We never expected that, of course, when we, when we set these up originally. But uh, that's how we, we came up. We came up with them because we thought, well, workshops are okay, face-to-face -face workshops, but let's look at alternatives. And, now, in a way, we're forced to use this alternative, at least for the time being. Why do we call them learning pathways? Well, we actually hummed and hard about this. Um, they are actually tutorials. They're sort of online self-study tutorials. But we're sort of thinking of each page of what, was, what Andrew was showing you earlier as a sort of little tutorial in itself. So we came up with the idea of learning pathways of tutorials. So they're like mini tutorials all put together into a, a learning pathway. And um, what I'm going to cover then is the, the idea of the, um, of the open access, publish open access learning pathway. Just want to remind you, um, we would like you to, uh, it's interesting, I'm trying to, Okay, I was, okay. Um, I'm trying to uh, uh, show you a bit about this concept of open access publishing. We would like you to access these through the, um, through the Moodle, as it, Andrew explained earlier. If you do everything through Moodle, you will get your certificate at the end. However, if those of you who are deciding, well, I'd just like to just do a little bit on open access publishing. You can go straight into the learning pathway. And uh, after this set of, uh, of pilots are through, where we're working with AFLIA July and in, uh, in, into early August, once this set of um, pilots are through, um, people can just go into OER Africa website and look at the uh, learning pathways. So, um, however, uh, AFLIA will also keep them on Moodle and um, uh, they will be able to present to people using the Moodle. So, um, if I just want to make sure my technology is working okay, um, 
I've got on my screen now publish using open access and Ken, can you just confirm that you can see the, uh, the learning yeah. path where it says start course? I can see that. Great. Okay. Thanks very much. So that's what this is, uh, this is about. And if we go, um, straight into start course, um, we can, and I'll just move it across. Uh, so you can, so down the left hand side are the various sections. And um, I will, all I'm going to do today is give you an introduction, a taster. I'm not going to try and spend too much time on it, but I will stop from time to time and ask, um, ask you to uh, give me an answer to a question. This is what, this is what we envisage uh, for this learning pathway. We, uh, we've got a little graphic at the beginning and we're going to try and we're, there's an introduction to it. Um, why would people want to consider? Now, many of you pu might publish. As librarians, you might publish in your own right. Um, um, but you also, in your position, should be able to advise your colleagues, academic colleagues, lecturers um, about publishing. And that's the purpose of this learning pathway. Why should people consider open access publishing? Um, and we'll look a little bit at that. We're not trying to say, do all your publishing in open access journals. We're not saying that. Um, but it, it should be an option for people and they might want to consider it if they haven't considered it before. Um, I'm, although I work at Sadie now, I'm a former academic. I worked at uh, the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, called Witz University in Johannesburg, for 21 years. So I am an academic by background. I've obviously uh, um, published um, reasonably extensively and I've supervised students publishing as well, their own work. So the idea of open access publishing. And then we go on to the various options, the various options in publishing. Um, and then we move on to probably the most important part, which is choosing a journal. What journal should you choose? And when people think of open access publishing, they sometimes think of this, if you can see it, we'll talk about it a little bit later, the idea of predatory or deceptive publishing, to not to avoid those sorts of journals. And then the learning pathway finishes off with other open movements, just to give you a link into the other open movements there are. And there is an assignment, which if you're doing this through Moodle, we'd like you to do and submit to us. So that's essentially what uh, this learning pathway is all about. Here are the outcomes, which summarizes that, what it is, why publish that way, what are your options, choosing a journal, and then the other open movements. So I'm just going to say, start a little bit, um, open access publishing, and all the way through, as Andrew showed you, we would like you to, to, to consider all the questions as you go through. Right? You don't just read through it and then go on. You read through it, and we'd like you to actually, in your mind, or even in a little journal, if you keep a journal of your own, many academics and librarians keep a journal to jot down ideas. Um, I don't, um, in a way, this is my journal. Uh, this is uh, the stuff I just, stuff I write down and keep. It's a good idea. So you might want to write down your um, answer to that in, in, in your own journal. Um, and I'm not going to ask you that question now. I will be asking you some questions later on. But we introduce the uh, uh, the idea of open access through a video. And I'll just start off the video. I won't run it all the way through, but here's uh, the video, what, what, what is open access? And I'll just run it within the, the link here. It's not <laughs> connecting easily at the moment for some reason. Maybe it's my bandwidth. No, it's telling me to restart my device. Okay, it may be because I uh, went straight into this without. Uh, yep, stop it. I don't want to restart anything because that can give us can give us problems. Okay, now it's stuck on the stuck on do, this page. Do you want me to um, uh, share my screen? Uh, yeah, because mine was uh, I didn't test this one this morning. I 
had it tested from yesterday. So, so you if you'd like to... The open, open the learning pathway is what you want, eh? Uh, the, yeah, it's the... Um... Coming up. Okay, thank you. <coughs> what is open access publishing, Andrew? Yeah. Give me a second while I uh, find it. I actually it would be quicker if I go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Now you're all waiting for me. Give me a second. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here we go. And it is this one. All right. Let me ship my screen. Thank you. Let me know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. Go down. Start the course. Okay. What is open access publishing, please? Uh, what is? Okay. Yeah, what is open access? Go down, go down, go down, go down. Down, 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 down. That one? No. What is? There. Down. Yeah, this one, that video. I was going to start that video. Yeah. Sorry, you've gone too far. Yeah, there's a delay between what, you, what I'm seeing and what you're seeing. Okay, here we go. Mm. Tell me when to kill it. Sounds. Is a scholarly publishing model that improves access to research. Traditional scholarly publishing models create price and permission barriers that prevent people from accessing research. In contrast, open access makes research available free of charge and free of most copyright and licensing restrictions. The U of G library spends millions of dollars a year to provide students and professors with access to research. But there are many people who still have to pay out of their own pocket. Because of the high cost of research, many practitioners, alumni, and independent scholars are unable to access research. Open access removes these price barriers by providing online access to research free of charge. Traditional scholars- Okay, Andrew, you can stop there. Okay. The use of research. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, okay, so that's the, um, let me go back to mine. Okay, so, um, that's the idea behind open access publishing, uh, uh, freely accessible to people. So this, this explains a little bit, and we've got a little activity, a rather very, very simple one, which I won't even go through, but you will go through when you go through it yourself. So, um, and then we ask a question towards the end of the, uh, of the first section. Do you feel that your own research or that of your colleagues gets enough exposure? Now, one thing about academics, they do like people to cite their work. And um, this is the idea of open access publishing is that it's likely to increase citation rates of your research. We are actually going to be producing another learning pathway later in the year, which encourages academics to publish their research, not just for other academics, but for uh, uh, people who are not specialists and we're going to try and explain how to to actually get your research out there to an even bigger audience okay so um, that's the first uh, little section of it and I'll look at the uh, I'll go through a couple more of these um, and then um, I'd like to ask uh, I'll um, ask for some questions so we're gonna we, the next thing we ask is why should you consider open access and we, what we show um, people is uh, try, try and show them the benefits of open access publishing, which are varied. There are various benefits of doing it. And once people are, can look at a diagram like this, and then we're going to give them a little activity. There are benefits to the researcher. There are benefits to the public. And there are benefits to both. So, um, for example, with this, uh, we've got one of these little drag and drop, like we said before, uh, and you can say, well, higher citation rates are mainly good for the, uh, for the researcher. The public can, ac can access your findings. Obviously, that is a benefit 
probably to both, but it's certainly to the public, etc. So the idea of this little section is getting people to consider why it might be a good thing for themselves, a benefit to uh, publish open access. And remember what I said earlier, we're not saying everybody must do all their publishing like this. It is parts of your research, parts of your colleagues' research that might benefit. It might even be part of the postgraduate students' research. Um, rather than getting them to publish in a very, very highly rated journal that is very, very difficult to get into because they have a 95% rejection rate, it might be good for the students, postgraduate student, to publish in a good quality open access journal. And that's what I'd like to go on to now. Um, I'm going to jump over the publishing options and I'm going to go straight on to uh, choosing a reputable open access journal. Because this is the bit that some people get worried about. Um, uh, there are journals that are not reputable. So how do you choose a reputable journal? And um, you, in the end, I'll give you the answer now. It's up to you to decide what is the most appropriate journal to publish your work in. But there's a process you can go through to do that. Um, there is a big range of journals, and this is a very good little video. I won't try and play it now. I don't want it to not run. Um, very good little video from a, a website called Think, Check, Submit. Uh, and it's actually a, a website that, um, and there it is mentioned there, three, Think, check, check, Submit website. Um, this comes from the website and it says, okay, think about what journals, check the journal, and we give you advice in the learning pathway on how to check the journal, and then you can submit. So um, we, uh, for example, um, we would, uh, in fact, we would like you to think of this. Okay, look at this journal, the International Journal of Education. And if you want to see about further about it, you can access it there. It's on the web. It's on the web. And then we would like you to check these boxes, check these questions, these criteria. Do you know of the journal? Have you read any articles? Can you find the latest papers in, in it? Can you identify and contact the publisher? What fees will they charge? Because we need to make it clear that most open access journals do charge some sort of fee. And they do this so that the journal can keep going. Uh, they do this so that the journal can continue to, to, to be published because publishing does cost money. Um, however, you can hopefully, uh, 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 you don't necessarily have to pay the fee yourself. Maybe the people who funded your research can assist you. Maybe your institution can assist you. Those are the sorts of things one would need to think about with open access publishing. And then there are some several other questions. And then eventually you evaluate and say, actually, is this uh, the right journal for me? And um, to do that, you need to go to uh, the, these various uh, uh, websites, the Committee on Publication Ethics, Directory of Open Access Journals, and uh, possibly other, this one as well. So these people on the internet all help you to decide on what is a good journal or not. Um, here's the Directory of Open Access Journals. Um, they uh, they, and we've got a little activity for you to do, go to the website and then use this diagram to decide uh, what aspects of DOAJ are important for you to, uh, so we've got there. You're going to see how it's organized. You're going to do a search for journals in your subject. And then uh, you can look at the, you'll find that most of them have Creative Commons licenses. And that's the, that's the whole point. So this is a picture from the DOAJ website. So um, that is 
the probably the most important part of this particular learning pathway, and that's about choosing your journal. Now, this is actually, this is something that was sent to me. And many of you in a university might receive things like this. Uh, dear, and that one's my name, with an exclamation mark, right? It says, Dear Anthony Lelliot, with an exclamation mark. We came across your article titled something, something, that was published in something, something, was impressive and caught our interest. These guys are trying to persuade me to publish in their journal. And this next section is all about what is sometimes called deceptive publishing. It's also known as predatory publishing. Um, and we explain what it's all about and how to identify such publishers. So uh, that's what this section's all about. And um, okay, so after reading those and watching the video, you can then complete this small activity uh, to uh, what, what, to see what, what pu deceptive publishers usually miss out when they, uh, when they talk about offering to publish your article. So um, that's the section then on, uh, on deceptive publishing. We also have warning signs. Which, so this is basically little multiple choice. Um, and I'm, since you haven't been through the learning pathway yet, I'm not expecting you to, to answer these questions. But that's the way uh, we've got these, uh, these three, these ways of looking out for deceptive publishers. We prefer to call them No, it's online. Um, but they are commonly referred to as predatory publishers. Okay, so um, we ask you again, we keep asking you questions um, all the way through. How do you respond when you receive unsolicited invitations to publish? And uh, we, give you, we give you some feedback. We always like you to, uh, um, to, to think through the question and at least in your mind answer it. As I said, it's actually better from your point of view. I mean, from your point of view, it'd be quite a good idea if you have a little journal or something you keep, you could just say, right, open access publishing, I'm just gonna note, jot down my answers because in six months time, you might wanna refer back to those. Maybe you want to, uh, maybe you want to do a talk to your mm -hmm. colleagues at your institution about open access publishing. Then any ideas you you've got could go into your journal. But as with all the uh, learning pathways, we do give you feedback, okay? So we give you feedback uh, that you can uh, think about as well but we prefer you to think of your own answer before you go to the feedback. Okay, so um, those are some of the uh, uh, aspects of this um, learning pathway. Um, and the final section is on um, open movements. Uh, and why is it not going there? It's not going there. Oh, sorry, I haven't done the right thing. Um, the last section is on other open movements. We decided that you, you need to know around, about the various aspects of openness because uh, you're gonna hear more and more about them as time goes by. Uh, it, there's no doubt that um, openness is a thing in the world at the moment. And whether you want to engage or not, you do at least need to know about it. So. The idea here is, and of course, we're, we're talking about these ones, open educational resources and open access journals in our two learning pathways. But we are going to provide more learning pathways later this year. Um, one of them is around um, uh, um, the, uh, uh, just about um, open learning generally, etc. But um, I also want to mention that we, um, I did mention this yesterday, some of you are in yesterday's session. Um, we've got your email addresses and we are going to put you on our OER Africa mailing list. We've been sending out um, uh, 
communications just in this COVID time about various aspects of openness. And uh, we're going to put you, put you on our mailing list. You can always unsubscribe if you don't want to be there. I'm mentioning this because our latest post that we sent out uh, late last week was about, um, I'm just waiting for it, about this one, this one, open courseware. Uh, and so if you're interested in thinking about open courseware as a subset of OER, that's an area uh, that we, we have a little, um, a little communication about. So this last part is um, uh, people yesterday in yesterday's session did ask, what is the difference between open access publishing, which I'm talking about here, and open educational resources? Well, essentially, they are closely related. So what Andrew's been talking about for the last uh, couple of hours is basically OER, finding them and adapting them. So what is open access? Well, open access is a related area, um, but it's particularly, uh, it's particularly related to scholarly publications released under an open license. OER can, a uh, lot of them are teaching resources. Open access publishing is basically scholarly publication. And there's a little section there that explains uh, what it's all about. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And if we need to, I'm going to uh, go back to that. But uh, are there any questions anyone would like to ask? Um, you're welcome to put them in the chat. Or if you want to, you can put your hand up or you could just uh, unmute your microphone and ask a question. So that is, uh, that is my input, really. Remember, I'm just introducing you to the learning pathway because it's a self-study learning pathway that you are going to go through yourself over the next week or so. What we need to point out that we haven't set the date yet, but in about two weeks, we're going to ask everybody to come back to a Zoom like this. Um, and we're just going to have a, a session where people give us feedback on these learning pathways. Because as well as you are learning from them, we are treating this as a pilot. There are aspects that are, we would like to improve on these learning pathways. We will then go back into them, make the changes, and then release them as a sort of final version. And Nkem uh, of Atli has said that they would like to uh, take on our uh, Moodle, uh, basically our, our, our Moodle uh, course on these learning pathways, and then they'll be available to everybody uh, via Moodle, um, all Atli um, members, but um, as I mentioned before, they're also available on OER Africa website. So, any questions? I don't see any questions coming up on the chat yet. Hey, Tony. Uh, this is Aloysius. Yes, um, yes Aloysius. From uh, Sorry, where are you from? Here. Yeah. You're breaking up a little bit. Okay, carry on. Hello. I'm saying that um, uh, I'm Aloysius from Makere yes. University. Makere, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, what you're discussing, open access, is something of interest to me. Uh, it's thing uh, of interest, but it also disturbs me a lot. <laughs> um, okay, why? <laughs> yeah, um, I do my research, I do my study, uh, go through all those rigorous processes and uh, publish my work. And then, you want to I can't say, um, my work, cited, uh, etc., et et accessibility. But now, on the economic part of, and the time part of you, you know, um, how do these, how do authors who publish, for free, 
like in open access environment, how do they economically benefit? Because as an scholar, I wish to publish and my work, my work cited. I'll be excited, of course, when I see my works uh, cited in a, in it cause other um, other acts. But now, uh, you know, in Africa, we are not that we are not that rich. You know, I would wish to to publish and earn, publish and earn. And now you're in, we have this concept of free access. I don't know that you get my my. my okay, point. I can hear somebody. I'm afraid to say, Aloysius, that you're um, you're. Uh, you're breaking up quite a lot and it's quite difficult to hear all you're saying. From what I'm hearing, and it might be you just want to put the substance of the actual comment in the chat as well, because I think if I was struggling to hear you, other people would also. But your, your saying concerns you because of the economic side of it. The fact that you have to pay an article processing charge, that's what it's officially called, to, uh, to get into a journal. Okay, but what are, what, and I think that, is that correct? Is that what you're concerned about? Having to pay a charge to an open access journal to, uh, to publish, is that it? Yeah, this, that's perfect. And also, how do I benefit? Because when access feature, You're breaking up again, I'm afraid. Uh, you're breaking up very badly again, and we can't really hear. So part of it, how do you benefit? Well, I'm, I'm going to say, Please go through the learning pathway because I did show you a, 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 I did show you a, a screen where it shows all the benefits of open access publishing. And as I mentioned also, you need to uh, understand that uh, the, it, certain parts of your research might benefit from, uh, from open access publishing, but other parts of your research might not. So what this, the idea here is to say, we're not trying to say everybody must do publish open access. We're trying to say, here is an option that might benefit uh, you in various ways. However, I would expect that most academics would want to carry on um, in their normal um, uh, publishing way, they would do publishing in traditional journals, but they might also do some experimentation with publishing in open access journals. So uh, uh, um, regarding the payment, yes, there is a fee. However, you, one of the benefits is that you keep copyright to your research. When you publish in a journal like an Elsevier journal or Springer journal or Taylor and Francis journal, you give copyright to the publisher. You no longer own your copyright. With open access publishing, you do keep it. So that's one of the benefits. The, another benefit is probably increased citation rates. So all I'm saying is consider this as an option within your publishing landscape. Okay. Um, uh, We've got two questions. We got two Thank questions you. in the chat. Um, yes. The first one is saying, thank you for your lecture. The question is, is it advisable for one to publish a journal that covers all range of disciplines? I think it's called a multidisciplinary journal, or is it best to go another route? And I'll answer that one first. I've, I've got the chat, so I'll have a look. Um, I, would, I would question multidis, uh, multidisciplinary journal. Um, the main thing is that you want to publish in a high quality journal mm -hmm. and the processes that we explain in the learning pathway show you how to how to find the best quality journal for your for your publishing i don't think um uh, i would actually say that some of the predatory uh publishers tend to be multidisciplinary not uh, you know they, they they don't they're not all like that but I would, I would question whether that's a good idea. I would say, fine, generally one wants to publish in high quality journals because then you get basically high quality citations from your, from your research. That's what I would suggest. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Hello, Tony. Hello, yes. yes. Rosa, uh, good morning. How are fine. you? Fine, you? Yes, um, uh, I'm 
Professor Echezona from Nigeria, precisely yes. University of Abuja. Yes, thank you for your uh, thank you for your um, your lecture. I enjoyed it. Actually, uh, open access and OER. Yes, there are a lot of difference between them. When we when you now talk about, you know, we are academic librarians. We want people to read us. We want people to, uh, you know, to, to, to um, when they are writing, they quote us. But actually, we also want our university to be visible. And we can, also, we can only be visible when we, uh, uh, when we uh, 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 look into this OER. That's the only way we can be visible. That's the university, where we can get all our publication, university publication, into one place. So my question is this, I floated a journal. Uh, I also publish it online. But my problem is, uh, yes, I want it to be open access, but I want also to make money out of that journal. So how do I marry the two? Thank you. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting question. Thank you very much. Uh, Huh. I don't know if I can, because I don't actually run a journal, um, I'm not sure if I can, uh, I, I can answer the first part of, it, of the question. Um, yeah. the, um, you, you should look at the directory of open access journals. Have you looked at the directory of open access journals? Because they basically have a questionnaire that allows you to decide on how open you want your journal to be and those sorts of things. What's so okay? it would be very good to go to such, and that's on the learning pathway. I showed you the picture of it, um, uh, because then they can assess the journal, and then uh, they can decide, obviously, on its on its quality. As for making money out of it, that's <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's going to be a more difficult thing, because uh, uh, the, the, you would have to ch you would have to charge people to publish in it, and that might put people off. It depends on what the charge is. So I'm not. Don't, I don't think I'm qualified really to to answer that part of the question. I'm afraid. My I don't know if anyone else would like to uh, to dip in there. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to contribute to this. Thank you. With, with regards to the making money out of it, I think she can. But just that you have to do it very well in terms of going through the rigorous uh, processing uh, peer review process and then go through let your journal be indexed by uh, Dubai. Now, okay. when you go to Dubai, you see quite a lot of uh, journals there that charge they charge article processing fee. Yeah. So if you like, you can you can charge article processing fee, add your whatever money that you want to add to it, but make sure that you go through the rigorous peer review process any time a manuscript is submitted to you. So that can be done. Um, the next thing is uh, with the, Tony, we, what we said that uh, multidisciplinary uh, journals, uh, most of them are predatory. I agree, but you can also get um, quite a lot of good credible or good, let's say credible uh, databases that are institutional journals. Right. So institutional journals like, um, Let's say, oh no, sorry. <clears throat> this, yeah, it's, my, yeah, my, like a departmental my, library. My, like journal. my university, like my university have, they have a good journals, but they are multidisciplinary because we have different event subject areas. The same as I'm sure the University of Ibadan may have a journal that uh, is multidisciplinary because all different event subject areas are there. So they are encouraged, right. uh, they are professors and whatever, scholars to publish in. So in as much as some of these uh, multidisciplinary database uh, journals are not good, there are also good multidisciplinary okay. databases Fair. that we can also use. Thank Fair you. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you for your, okay. thank you for your thank contribution. You. Yes, thank you. Uh, the, 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 pla the, the place I'm going, you know, when you, op when you publish your book or your, open, um, or your journal in open access, already it's open. Everybody can download it. Anybody can read it. So in that case, I don't think you can make money out of it. Please, can you educate me more on that? Well, as I said, I can't because it's not quite my area. Um, 
There, there, um, I, uh, yeah, so I don't know if anyone else has any suggestions there, because as academics, that's not normally the, <laughs> the purpose of our lives. Um, you know, it is, to, uh, it is to research and publish and teach, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you want to make money, I think it's going to be a, it would be a, 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 a there would have to be some aspect, a, a, other aspects. And what Richard was saying was that you need to make sure it's a high quality one, um, yes. and you would then, you would have to charge uh, an article processing fee. Obviously, you could start off at a low fee so that people, a number of people can, uh, can uh, contribute. And as your journal gained in respect, et cetera, maybe you could increase that fee so that it became, uh, but I don't think you're ever really going to make money out of it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Can I say uh, something? Yeah. Yes, sure. You see, knowledge is becoming more and more free. You know, the emphasis all over the world now is, is on open, you know, collaborations, building knowledge from what others have done. So the open aspects of it, that's that, that, that aspect, you know, the expectation is that people will share and it doesn't have to be for a price. Um, APC does article processing charges. I think that's, that's the, 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 fair, the fair way that a journal can use to um, make money. Then, because um, why I'm saying this is that right now, there are, there are initiatives that are driving open data. That when people claim that, that, that they run a research, sure, publish open access, then let us have links to your research data so that we can be sure of the thing you did. And so many countries are buying into it. Now, if, if and, and, and it's done so that whatever you did can be replicated. If now people are sharing, not just their um, research findings, but also their research data, you know, putting a high price tag or putting a price tag on, on, on journals to make money might, might almost be impossible mm. because the emphasis is, is on openness. Because everybody is now realizing that for the world to move, to, to move forward, knowledge must be available, must be accessible without price tags that can stop people from uh, gaining access to such knowledge. So I, 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 I just think that thinking along the line of making money from open access journals might not be the thing now. Right, that's what I'm thinking okay. as well, yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Nkemi. Thank you. Um, so just to quickly, uh, one person, sorry, Ngozi Chima James wants to, uh, me to expand on think, check and submit. Um, look, I, we really don't have time to do that now. There's a very good video um, in the learning pathway on think, check and submit. And um, there's, uh, it comes from their website. And that will, the idea basically behind it is to think of what you want to do regarding your journals, what journal, what sort of journal do you want to publish in? Then you need to go on and check the various journals available. And then you will get all, get all the information you can about them. And then finally you submit uh, to the journal. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go into the detail of it now, but that's essentially what it, what it means. Um, Okay, so the other, um, the other question in the chat is, uh, does it mean those journals that charge fees for publishing do a better work on article publication than the free ones? Why are they free? Well, in a way, nothing is free. Um, the, uh, the, as I, again, we explain this in the learning pathway, so st uh, uh, my apologies if I'm brief here, but um, traditional publishing, uh, relies on um, two things, advertising, traditional journal publishing, 
relies on advertising and relies on um, libraries subscribing to the journals. Mm. And what happens these days is that libraries have to pay quite a lot of money to subscribe to the big journals. They get their money from those subscriptions. Whereas um, uh, open access journals, you don't need to uh, you don't need to pay to access the individual articles in them, but they they will need some form of income to keep the journal going, unless it's funded from a some sort of big grant or something, mm. and that income has to come from something like an article processing charge. Um, so basically, uh, for journals to work, they, they, they either need people to work for free, which to be honest, some of us do because we actually review, the review in the articles uh, is normally done free, um, but, uh, they, or they need to charge a fee of some sort. So there's always, there's always funding issues somewhere uh, for journals to continue to continue going. But if you go through the, the learning pathway, we do expand a little bit about traditional publishing versus open access publishing and hybrid journals as well, hybrid publishing. Okay, uh, anything else? Uh, we're coming towards the end of our day. Uh, Kem, I don't know if you would like to, I'm happy to answer more questions, but I think I've got, there's nothing else in the, in the chat. I, I don't think we have any more questions. You know, the important thing is that you've done the introduction. We'll now yeah. dig into the learning pathway and then um, learn, you know, see what's up there. And then um, since we we'll have um, another meeting like this after two weeks, you know, after we've uh, gone through the, um, yes. the, the pathways, then we can ask further questions yes because like i said before you know this is an opportunity for us to challenge our minds you know our skills the things that you know that we thought that we know or that we knew to know that see the world is changing and like um, andrew said librarians cannot continue to be custodians of uh, information we are now getting into a place where we need to start creating alongside with um, IT professionals, alongside with lecturers. So we need to be up, you know, in our game so that we can, we cannot be found wanting. So any questions that we have, you know, if what you see in the learning pathway, it doesn't help you to answer yeah. it, then get ready to um, yeah. ask us in, in two weeks time. Then uh, also know that because this is a pilot training, whatever you ask us, we'll now see ways of uh, adding it to the content to yes. make it more vibrant and robust. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And you're welcome also to email us. Uh, Andrew said email him if you have struggled with Moodle. Um, I will be sending everybody uh, uh, um, an email as well. So. Um, particularly people who are on the doing this learning pathway and you're very welcome to send me a, a question in an email or you could put it on slack so any of those options are available to you yeah because that that slack um, uh, um space is is good for asking questions so that yes. other people can also help to answer yes Thank you. that's true okay i think uh we are through um, Andrew, I don't know if you've got anything else you finally want to mention, if you thought of anything while you are away. I'm envious. We had a nice discussion after yours. I uh, <laughs> tea. But so. I didn't answer. I didn't answer. Ask any questions on the way. I just rushed through it all. But anyway. Yeah, the, the, uh, okay. all, all will be revealed when people go through the learning pathways. And then as in Kim has mentioned, in about two weeks time, uh, you can you can grill us again. So that would be great. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to open the microphones now, and Kem, if people want to talk to each other, people are from different institutions. If anyone yeah. wants just to talk to, I, I mean, 
for five minutes, I think it's fine to do that. And then we'll end yeah. just, just after two. But I'd like to thank you very much. Um, and, and Kem, you and I'll be in touch for, in relation to Tuesday. Tuesday? What's happening on Tuesday again? All right, on 28th? <laughs> yes, 28th. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 sure, 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 sure. We'll just need to for, be in touch about who might be coming in. Yeah, for um, Botswana. Yeah. And yeah. then um, more pop of people that, that couldn't make Correct. it. Especially Correct. for University frozen. of uh, Abuja, because we didn't yes. see okay. on 28th. The ones who didn't attend yesterday and today will now not attend. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So, uh, so say hello to the others. Then you can um, you can go because we are done. Yeah, unmute all. Are we going on duty? Are we going on duty? Thank you. Hello. Hello. Are we supposed to go on duty? I can't hear you. It's a big echo. Are we supposed to go on duty? No. Yeah, somebody's asking a question. Uh, the question is, ask, are these people in this session expected to be in the one on the 28th? And the answer is no. It's a, it, no, 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 no. Because that one is for people mainly from Botswana that couldn't join us today. And then yeah, from yeah. University of Abuja that couldn't join us today too. Yeah. So um, No, no, we've done ours. This is... No, no. So, um, so Richard... We've had enough of you, so go and do your uh, <laughs> your your learning. Thank you, uh, Robert. And then another question is another question is. Excuse me, can uh, let me ask something? Is it is it uh, exactly two weeks from today? No, we'll we'll set the date. date. Okay. Ken, yeah. we, we need to talk, discuss with Ken to say the date. To say. Fantastic. All right. Yeah. We'll we'll yeah. tell everybody on Slack and by email. All right, Prof. You wanted to ask a question, Prof. You said Hello, that bro. there will be another one. When? When is it? Let me know so that I will tell them. I, you know, you have to be, you know, pushing them, them petting them. You know, it's for their own good, but it's also for the university good yeah. too. Sure. So we we are having another opening session on 28th, 28th of July. Of this month. Exactly. So we'll send you the uh, link so that you can make sure that all your people are here. Okay. You know, because when you don't join us for for this, it might be hard for you getting into the uh, Moodle platform. You might have issues. That's number one. Then the the second one is that you you might get lost inside there. And once you don't do it, you won't get your certificate. So that's why we want people to be here so that we can break them in gently, and then they go and learn. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? That one goes up. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you for Bye, coming. Thank Bye. you. Bye. I'm coming to Slack now. Seven is That's good. Then I'll talk to you. Thank Bye. you. Thanks very much. Thank you, you um, um, Richard. Thank you, uh, uh, Ijoma, Edward. <laughs> Anna, Taylor, and Laurie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thank you. 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 Thank